Hey, welcome guys. Hope everybody's doing well. This is TSP, the spiritual philanthropist, Rav Shiva. Um, today we're going to look at, her name is Rania, she's a very beautiful woman, and she's very eloquent when she speaks, actually. And I uh, want to hear what she has to say. I guess Christine Amanpour is going to be the one on CNN to interview her. So let's take a look at this. And, you know, I like to be completely equal and, and you know, in perspective and understanding of what's going on and try not to side with anyone to look at it from a uh, analytical point of view but also as a spiritual uh, point of view as well so uh without any further ado as they say i hate saying that but with any without any disturbances hopefully uh, let's go forward here all right jordan is home to 40 percent of the total registered palestinian refugees in the middle east according to the u.m that is simply a huge number, especially for a small country. Jordan's Queen Rania is herself of Palestinian descent, and she's joining me now for a world exclusive from Amman, the capital. Queen Rania, welcome to our program. Thank you, Christian. Can I ask you first, as an Arab, as a Palestinian, as a human being, a mother, how you're feeling ever since October 7th? Well, look, Christian, I cannot begin to describe to you the depth of the grief, the pain, and the, uh, the shock uh, that we are feeling here in Jordan. All of us are united in this grief, regardless of our origin. Uh, we are just, just can't believe the images that we're seeing every single day coming out of Gaza. We're going to bed to, uh, seeing those images and waking up to them. You know, I don't know how to, you know, as a mom, We've seen uh, Palestinian mothers who've had to write the names of their children on their hands because the chances of them being shelled to death, of their bodies turning into corpses, are so high. Hmm. I, I just want to remind the world that Palestinian mothers love their children just as much as any other mother in the world. And for them to have to go through this is just unbelievable. You know, I just wanted to point out, if you look at those pictures, they just had that aer aerial view of... Um of that area, of the, uh, probably the Gaza Strip area where they were bombing. I mean, if you think of an, uh, uh, a neighborhood anywhere, I mean, I'm thinking here in America where I live, let's say it's Brooklyn, for instance, God forbid, or, or the Bronx or Queens, or even here, you know, any part of, of the world, wherever you're from, just look, look at your area. And imagine seeing that much devastation. Uh, wouldn't it somehow make you stop and think of the loss of life? The people that have lost you know, their family members, it doesn't matter what happened on October 7th. This, the, imagine all those people being displaced. How many people have died? You have to be really understanding about this and think about it and look at that picture. You know, it's just, it's horrific, man, when you look at it. I mean, you, I mean, if you're human, you have to feel that. Um, all right, I just wanted to point that out. So, you know, you, the viewers really get an idea of what, what that depiction was there. You know, because sometimes we see things and we just don't think about the devastating impacts, you know, that it has. And equally, I think the people all around uh, the Middle East, including in Jordan, we are just shocked and disappointed by the world's reaction to this catastrophe that is unfolding. In the last couple of weeks, we have seen, you know, a glaring double standard uh, in the world. When October 7th happened, the world immediately and unequivocally uh, stood by Israel and uh, its right to defend itself and condemned uh, the attacks that happened. But when we, what we're seeing the last couple of weeks, we have, we're seeing silence in the world. Um, you know, the countries have stopped at just expressing concern or acknowledging the casualties, but always with a preface of declaration of support uh, for Israel. And, you know, are we being told that it is wrong to kill a family, an entire family at gunpoint, but it's okay to shell them to death? I mean, there is a glaring double standard here, and it is just shocking to the Arab world. This is the first time in modern history that there is such human suffering, and the world is not even calling for a ceasefire. So the silence is deafening, and to many in our region, it makes the Western world complicit you know, um, through their support and through the cover that they give Israel, that it is just, uh, it's right to defend itself. Many in the Arab world are looking at the Western world as not just tolerating this, but as aiding and abetting it. And this is just uh, horrendous and, and it's deeply, deeply disappointing to all of us. Uh, Queen Rania, I'm going to ask you more about this. And
you know, everything she just said uh, makes a lot of sense. You know, she's saying that the world is watching and they're watching an entire population of people get obliterated. Uh, yes, they have different uh, reasons that they may want to do those things, you know, <laughs> but uh, there are international human rights uh, laws that apply to every situation of war. And uh, I think that uh, Israel is not abiding by those. Israel is falling far, you know, from actually uh, abiding by what those laws stand for. It actually is a damn shame, you know. The You know, I think that the world is divided on this situation. And she used some words here. And I know not everybody understands every single word. They're not going to take the time to look up the dictionary, you know, look in the dictionary, Google the words. But when she said that they're aiding and abetting, some people may understand that, and they use and she, and, and Rania, uh, Queen Rania uses the words uh, "complicit." And these words uh, really is establishing a basis that the United States is helping and funding Israel to do that damage and that and commit those genocides and those illegal crimes. So it makes them, in other words, a part of the situation. That's what complicit means, aiding and abetting, okay? So that's what she's saying. And if you think of it logically, logically speaking, and even in a court of law, if you look at it from a standpoint of law, it is correct what she's saying. Now, some people are trying to say that that's wrong because, you know, on October 7th, it was the 9-11 of Israel, and, and it, you know, it changed everything. So that gives them the green light to go ahead and just, you know, blow them to smithereens. doesn't matter. They have, you know, they can just kill whoever they want because they're they're fighting against the Hamas and, and uh, whatever other forces are involved there, on, on, you know, that they call terrorists. You know, I just think that uh, if it were that easy, you know, for us to, you know, just imagine us, you know, uh, you're and your neighbor having an argument. And, uh, you know, you're let's say you have, you know, an entire mob behind you to, you know, to basically to back you up and whatever you want. And you're in the same situation, you're living in the same place, but you go and you take over part of their, you know, part of their apartment and you tell them hey look i'm gonna have my apartment plus this this room in your apartment and then they agree to it you know they agree to it then you start taking another room and then they agree to that but when they get angry and they fight back and hey look you, you know blah, blah blah and they you know maybe attack one of you then you say you know what i have a mob behind me i can do whatever i want and you go and you kill the person or you know kill a family member of theirs you know and they and then you know <laughs> you, you don't even just kill the family member you actually kill everyone in that family you know and and you're like okay now i can have this entire place to myself look at it from that standpoint from an individualistic standpoint not just as an entire nation or country look at it as an individual so looking at it as an individual meaning the micro the uh, smaller perspective the macro which is a larger perspective is you know the in, entire situation you know in the world that's happening I like to look at both areas to be able to compare myself with the situation by having a micro understanding of it to a macro understanding of it because it helps me to understand it a lot better. And I hope you guys can take that and put yourself in the situation as well and see, does that seem right to you on a humanistic level? Does it seem that, that it's a proper way to engage in such a confrontation and such an event? Uh, how do you conduct yourself now at this point? What, what, you know, and then you, you know, before you even kill the people off, you actually prevent them from getting food, shut off their gas, electricity, and everything else. Think about that as well. You know, uh, let's say there's only one surviving member of the child, and they have no gas, light, electricity, you know, you know nothing. And uh, you know, just think about that. If you, ha if none of you have ever been in that situation, I have. I grew up in situations like that. I know what it feels like. When your stomach is, you know, is wanting food, you know, you get, you get, you get crazy, you know, you'll do anything to get something to eat at that point. And there's so many people in that position. I just, I, you know, like I said, I want to try to come from a perspective of trying to understand it from a spiritual side, you know, uh, standpoint, but I'm trying to get you guys to understand it again from the micro perspective as an individual and then at the macro and we look at it from the rest of the world's perspective as well. You know, um, you could say, the other word that I could use here when I say individual and micro is subjective, your feelings on it. How would you feel in that situation? Objectively, we look at it and we just see the grand picture of what's happening. Now, when you look at something objectively, you don't necessarily feel everything that's happening. But when you can place yourself in that situation and it becomes subjective to you at that point, 
Okay, and that's what I'm trying to emphasize here. And I think this is one of the things they really leave out in the media. They don't allow you or don't even explain it to you. And that's what I want to do, guys. Your likes, uh, subscribing and sharing my work helps me in many ways. Ooh.